Terraria's long-awaited Labor of Love update gave the melee class a complete overhaul. While some weapons have remained unchanged, many of the game's swords, spears, and other pokey things have been given new features and a new look. This video contains all four parts of our Terraria melee-only playthrough. Any weapon or attachment that does melee damage will count. Any other forms of damage, like ranger or magic damage, will not be allowed. However, mounts like the slimy saddle are allowed to be used. Now that we know the rules of this playthrough, let's get into the gameplay. We started out by getting wood and building simple housing for our NPCs. Then, I crafted up some wooden armor for easy early game defense. I ventured to the left side of the world and I found a chest, giving me my first melee weapon of the playthrough. I discovered the nearby corruption biome. Having this biome close to home gives us easy access to its loot. There we go. As night fell, we chose to start working on the elevator rather than fighting an endless horde of mobs with starter loot. While I was mining ores, Caleb got our first life crystal. Ranger. In other worlds, I just get a magic conch, then I just go to other. I emerged from the cave with nearly enough iron to make a full armor set. One housing area. Then I went caving once more to complete my armor set. Oh yeah, we don't lose all our money since this isn't master. Oh yeah, I did. When I returned, I the merchant no was still idea. yet to spawn in even though he met all the requirements. Oh, there he is. Finally, the merchant arrived, giving us access to the piggy bank, healing potions, and an anvil. The bottom right, but I don't know how we'll harvest that whenever there's water surrounding- Oh, it'll- it has an explodey on it. Do I do it? My <laughs> god, it's lightning. With the help of Caleb, I was able to craft a full silver oh, armor set. Like a decent armor set. This would carry me all the way to Hellstone armor later in the playthrough. Um, I expanded the home by two rooms, and the nurse arrived shortly thereafter. So obviously I Discord got a glimpse. The um, Ignore the fact that Discord got... tarnished. Eleven. So you only have. So I my armor gives me. Now that we both had enough defense, we began our journey through the corruption. Alrighty, I need you over here. I was like, what if it was Riptide, and then I was gonna fly? Oh no. No, Caleb. After making it through the corruption, I discovered the snow biome. The snow biome being on the left means that the jungle biome will be on the right. Okay, dungeon. While exploring, we also found the dungeon, and Caleb got a free golden key. Left we returned home and expanded the elevator, finding an underground mushroom biome in the process. Ooh, a bunch of mushroom biome. After oh, a close call with a blue a jellyfish, I found a mace. I'll let you move it. Uh, it's a melee weapon. What is it? Mace. With 99 torches, I could turn this boring mace into a flaming mace that makes for a pretty good pre-boss weapon. Then, I came across two minecart rails and a life crystal, boosting my health to 140. While riding the minecart rail, I found a trap chest. Trap chests can be tricky to loot, but they tend to have the best loot. Suddenly, a tomb crawler started attacking. Well, that didn't work out very well. I returned to where I died and this time successfully looted the trap chest. It was definitely worth it. Returning to the surface, I expanded the housing by five rooms.
Then, I built a simple one-layer arena, making sure to include a full campfire and sunflower coverage. I decided I needed to loot the jungle. The jungle not only holds the ingredients needed to craft the blade of grass, but also has the chance of containing feral claws. After finding a cave entrance, I found a chest with the most useful item in Terraria. <laughs> Looking back on this, I have no clue how I didn't see that boulder. After running all the way back, I found a living mahogany tree. The loot was completely useless. Yeah. I found another jungle cave entrance and got a few chests. Damn. Spiked step stool. Ooh, umbrella. When I returned home, yeah, yeah, I sold the boomstick boom and crafted a loom. With this loom, I made a bed so we could farm the blade of grass in the jungle and respawn. Over. Damn, man, I was hoping I could just hear him do commentary. I'm in the jungle, I'm finding a man eater. Do I just go down this little cave right here? Nope, I dug a hole where you died. Dude, I I'm not gonna go, it's gonna take five seconds. Funny. Boom. You take this. And you take this. Wait, wiggle we? We are the what? Can I make the sword so I get the achievement? What achievement? And I already crafted it. For gems right now. After that struggle in the jungle, the normal underground was relaxing. Maybe. I was searching for gems no to way. make a hook. Maybe I did? Yeah, it was the perfect amount. Boom. That now we were more than prepared to take on the Eye of Cthulhu and King Slime, so I headed to the Corruption to make some summons. Multiple can spawn in our world. Yeah, but if that's if we're lucky. However, I died not once, but twice to fall damage. You forgot your happy thoughts, Zane. I did it again. I. <laughs> As night fell, we prepared for the Eye of Cthulhu fight. We placed the sharpening station, drank our buffs, and the fight began. Yeah, our NPCs will help. Only 5,000 health. Ooh, 11 damage, ow. Oh. Now he's angry. And no one ever said this fight was hard. Let's Yay, go. First boss. I've killed a boss before I've made a workbench. After the fight, we used our demonite bars to make the lights bane. This was a new reworked melee weapon and our second out of the four ingredients required for the knight's edge. Um, I guess I'll save the rest. Before we summon the king slime, we needed to make a mob killer for the goblin army. While trying to get the lava for a mob killer. I embarrass myself. No! Wrong button! Oh. Okay. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's not fair. That is not fair that you can do that to me. What can I say? This is my first time playing Terraria on PC. After completing the lava killer, we decided it had been long enough and summoned the king slime. Uh, let me iron straight now. Oh, I was hoping he'd say something else. Where is he? Peter's ass at like Pierce. Oh, yeah, he's spawning. I have no double jump, which is annoying.
Does he even take poison damage? Oh no. I like how they made the lights paint a lot better. Alright, let's just take keep him. <gasps> Wait, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. With the the, the it pushed me into him. <laughs> Dude, that's so embarrassing. No. Yeah, and that's fucking all for the internet to see, Caleb. I was just getting used to my Cthulhu shield on mouse and keyboard, so there were a few close calls. But in the end, we emerged victorious, and I got the slimy saddle on my first treasure bag. Caleb did not. Die, Caleb. Oh, well, this so much. thing is like crypto can be kind of cool. Um, it took an additional two kills for Caleb to get the slimy saddle, but eventually we both had the mount. Now that we've killed the King Slime, we need the Goblin Army to spawn. Defeating the Goblin Army would give us access to the Goblin Tinkerer, and with the Goblin Tinkerer, we would be able to fly and increase our defense. In order for the Goblin Army to spawn, however, we would need to break a Shadow Orb in the Corruption. Really, bro? That's not gonna blow it up. Here we go. What yet? What yet? What yet? Ooh! Okay. Thank you. Fucking fuck you. While destroying the Shadow Orbs, we found two Life Crystals. There's a, there's a... There's another one. At this point, Caleb went AFK, and I started to search the jungle for Feral Claws. I'm gonna save you guys the struggle of seeing this. There were a lot of deaths. It took more than an hour. But in the end, we came out with a lot of loot. After searching the jungle for over an hour, Caleb and I both found Warding Feral Claws. We searched Sky Islands for the Star Fury and found one pretty quickly. The Star Fury is the only pre-hard mode weapon we can use that shoots a projectile, making it ideal for the Worm, Skeletron, and the Wall of Flesh. Now that we have our main source of DPS, all that was left to do before fighting the Eater of Worlds was to build the arena. With the Bass Statue, Sharpening Station, and the Star Fury, this boss should be pretty easy. I wanted this top one to be like out of the corruption a little bit so we could get him to run. I did. Alright, I'm gonna spawn him. What was that thing? Wait for the move, he's not like the destroyer. Oh, there's two! Honestly, it's better for us to split him into parts so our melee can do more work. Yeah, that's right. But that's not really the piercing that we're going for. Yeah, I forgot about that. I, was I also was trying to just hit him a bunch from where I was. So I was trying to just like find sitting there. Okay, shut up. Once again, me and Caleb were victorious first try. When we returned home, Caleb surprised me with three eyes of Cthulhu. Easy. Demon Knight on Skeletron. Alright, please, please tell me that's There's it. There's no more. Okay. We waited a little bit for the Goblin Army to spawn, but then we decided to increase our armor set. Defeating the Worm gave us the demon scales necessary to craft a Nightmare Pickaxe. The Nightmare Pickaxe is capable of mining Hellstone. The strongest material in pre-hard mode. The water's gonna go be gone soon. On our way down, however, this happened. Yay! Let's let's just get it done. Let's just get it done. It's a bit of a meme in the Terraria community that the Goblin Army happens right when you don't want it to. So I was a little angry, but the Goblin Tinkerer was just as, if not more, important than Hellstone armor. Boom, motherfucker. Oh. oh. I landed on top of him. With the goblin army out of the way, we easily farmed enough hellstone to craft us both a full set of armor and two volcano swords. The volcano is the third ingredient for the Knight's Edge. What? It's... We need... So, we need 190 each. I'm not, I just, right. Fucking idiot. Well, a Hellstone set. With our new set of Hellstone armor, we searched for the Goblin Tinkerer, and after about 
30 minutes of searching, we realized we didn't have enough housing for him to spawn. Yeah. I built some more housing and I finished our dungeon arena while Caleb continued the search. After a little while longer, we found the goblin tinkerer and unlocked flight. Found him. Oh my god, really? Where? Where you were looking uh... first time. I got the, the Tinker's work, Workshop. I got the Rocket Boots. I got... Oh. Bleeding Lightning Boots? I mean, extra movement speed, I guess. With our newfound mobility, it was time to fight Skeletron. We I'm buffed ready. up and the fight began. I didn't even get hit. Oh my god, I'm kind of terrified. Okay. Oh my god, his hands are like... We quickly realized that we had overprepared for Skeletron and put him down You're with ease. You're not meant to play this fight melee. So I was just like, because he always just hovers above you, and like I won't be able to hit him. But he's kind of shit. Oh, he's following you. I don't know if you thought out the buffing the fiery great sword was a good idea when fighting Skeletron because of the booming. Oops. I'm at 1 HP. Let's go. Wow, that was difficult. Wow. With Skeletron defeated, we now had access to the dungeon. I'm gonna drink the Night Owl. Before fighting the wall and sending our world into hard mode, we needed one more melee weapon. The Knight's Edge. We already collected the three other swords required to make the Knight's Edge, and now all we needed to get was the Murmasa. Caleb got his pretty fast. And eventually, I got mine. Look at that. All right, the I'm last chest. When we returned home, we fought some eyes for gold. I took off that still. Oh. I wanted to use the Star Fury on the wall, so I would need plenty of gold to reforge. Oh my god, yes. With only a few things left to do before hard mode, I went down and farmed enough Hellstone for a Molten Pickaxe. I would need the Molten Pickaxe later in hard mode to mine the hard mode ores. Be After I got my pickaxe, we built the Hell Bridge. It took a while. Nope. Hey, look, you said the mud blocks wouldn't be enough to reach this. I think we're probably good if we made it to the trees. How long is this? Oh my god, yeah, we're definitely good. But now that we've completed our hell bridge, we have one thing to do before hard mode, and that is destroy the wall of flesh. So I crafted some buffs, uh, drank them, and the fight began. Yay! You just need to be like in there swinging on them, but just be careful. I need to, I'm trying to hit like both his eye and mouth at the same time. Remember, we do have good DPS after this. I know.
Dude, it's kind of worse. Hundreds. Hundreds. They're hungry. They're pretty hungry. Yeah, this is 300 blocks. We only have another 2,000 health. I have 300 dirt blocks. You don't want to get out of him. Oh! That was a close call for you at the end there. Shut up. Oh my god, it was cool though. <laughs> How would he put me under here? Alright, that is we the did it. flash kill. To start today's journey, we fought the wall of Back. flesh once again. Oh. My game froze. Let's what go. the fuck is hitting me? <laughs> Hold on, Ron. You got killed? Okay. I didn't even see how low he was getting. I thought we still had a ways to go. Or maybe twice again. Don't kill me. Oh, that block. Oh, I thought you got stuck in hell. Ah! Oh! That always happens right at the end. Look at me, I'm in here. Eventually, we both got the warrior emblem, giving us a 15% boost to our melee damage. We headed to the corruption to break shadow orbs. This would increase the chance of the goblin army spawning. The goblin army is the key to one of the best early hard mode melee weapons, the shadow flame knife. Right. There's a lot coming, Caleb. <gasps> no! Yay! Ouch. Will you break, the, break it the last bit that it needs? Oh, you uh, are trash, dude. Stand, like, on me. In the aftermath of our wall of flesh fight and utter destruction in the corruption, we began the most tedious part of early hard mode. Farming the hard mode ores. I drank a spelunker potion. I'm gonna get the, uh... The ores. We grabbed our spelunker potions and quickly got enough palladium bars to make a palladium drill. Hold it already. You know what? No, night's edge time. Come on, worm. Come up here. Asshole. During the hard mode ore grind, I've always been more of a drill guy. Do you want my molten pickaxe? Without wasting any time, I spelunked once again in search of mithril ore. So much down here. Because I also. Hunter, right? Yeah. Want it for a little bit? No. I got lucky and found multiple veins close together. All the torches. Every torch. God. This time, when I returned home, I crafted a mithril anvil. The mithril anvil is used for most hard mode crafting. I crafted a mithril drill and went mining. Again. Now I'm max hard. This farm run was not nearly as smooth. Post wall. Really? Post wall. Adamantite veins are scarce and only spawn close to the underworld layer. This means that we would have to traverse terrain crawling with mobs and flowing with lava. It took just over 40 minutes to get two full adamantite sets. There were plenty of deaths along the way, but this armor would be necessary for the bosses ahead. We began further preparations for Queen Slime. I built a quick arena that ended in the hollowed so we'd be able to summon her in the future. The arena had a full campfire and heart lantern coverage and would work perfectly for the Destroyer, the Twins, and even Skeletron Prime. Now it was time to get wings. Typically this process is fairly easy, but I couldn't get a single wyvern to spawn for 10 minutes. I have four iron skins. Nice. Eventually Caleb gave me some battle potions and wyverns began spawning rapidly. Oh hi. Hello friend. We determined that demon wings would be the best early hard mode wings to craft, so we farmed 30 souls of night. I'm dropping them on the floor, about right there, and then I'm going back. Then I'm we crafted the wings. wings. We spent the next hour farming tattered cloth for the goblin standard, and when I say it took one hour, I mean it took it a whole hour. I'm ready. But finally, right, we, we summoned the goblin those mean dudes at spawn.
Are you fucking kidding me? No way. That might have been the most unlucky thing that has happened to me in all of my hours on Terraria. We needed this goblin army if we wanted to take on the mech bosses. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the Shadow Flame Knife. The Shadow Flame Knife not only allows us to attack from a distance, but it also inflicts enemies with a passive damage debuff. The four Skeletrons here. No. My game froze, right? What Skeletron? Shadow what Flame do you do? Hex doll. He stun locked me. Unsurprisingly, we were unbuffed and died to Skeletron Prime. Uh -huh. Luckily, we were able to get both of the Shadow Flame Knives we would need. Shadow Flame Knife. Boom. Oh, like One event, we get both. With our wings, our armor, and our weapon of choice, it was time to fight the Queen Slime. We buffed up, headed to the hollowed side of our arena, and the fight began. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where is she? She's gotta come up here. I'm, oh, I'm hitting that block. That's why nothing was... I don't even know if I'm doing damage. You are. It doesn't feel like I am. Alright, we have got to do something about these ones though. I'm killing the ones on the floor. They're like, no, since it, it's nice knowing when I'm hitting him, her, and how much DPS I am doing. Ooh, I'm low. I'm sure. You're not sure. The fight was a breeze, and the Shadow Flame Knife was a great alternative to Ranger weaponry. Queen Slime Yay. defeated, let's fucking go. We opened our treasure bags and we did not get the gelatinous pillion mount. I crafted more buffs and we fought her again. Alright. Don't kill her. Oh. She died. And again. You guys are bringing her far away from me if you're gonna die. And again. She's died. She's died? Yay! <laughs> uh. Finally, we both had the gelatinous pillion. I reforged my gear and expanded the arena. Hello? Hello? I ended my recording and went running some errands. When I returned, me and Kayla prepared to fight the destroyer when suddenly the twins and then spawned. We have a bed up at the nurse's place. So let's just sleep up there. So. What? Why did that happen? Do we buff? I don't know. We were not ready for this to happen, so we weren't buffed. In order to survive this fight, we split the twins up and took them on separately. Um, should I buff? I can't buff right now. If you want to, yeah, do it. I don't have my buff for the thing, sadly. Like the uh, sharpness. Yeah, well. Hurt. And then be shot by gastropods. And lasers from yours are coming towards me. Oh, well, he's about to start rapid firing lasers. So enjoy. He's mech mode, by the way. Shit, my guy's shooting flames towards you. Oh, I have him angled towards the sky. Oh, mine's uh, angry. Does this laser do one damage to me? No, it does 28 yeah. during this part. Fuck. Red's dead. A little bit. Oh. Ouch. Bitch. Thank god he's on you. It's fine, don't worry. Come down here, spasmatism. Ouch. <laughs> well, there's What's the twins dead. I hope. What is that, dude? <laughs> we didn't even need to kill them. Our strategy worked perfectly, and the twins were defeated. We slept until the next night to complete our original plan, fighting the destroyer. Ready, I guess. There he is. No, oh, I'm doing this. We gotta avoid his head. Just trying to deal with these probes. He's coming. Sorry. 
we will kill this one. More like two. We will do that. Our head is just missing. This is so sad. It's better, honestly, to just shoot your shadow flame at him rather than shooting it up, Caleb. It is. Yes. Oh my god, it is. Destroy your dad. All right, grab the treasure bag. Woohoo! Our strategy changed a few times during the fight, but eventually we were successful. So successful, in fact, we fought the destroyer once more on the same night. Uh, right. ready? Yep. Maybe. No, look at the time. I can't look at the time? Well, no, like, look at the moon. You're right. Do you want to do it next night, or...? I made the Excalibur, so I have that now. Oh, wait, well, you get to make the True Knight's Edge, like, immediately. Yep. I always forget about that. The mask. Oh, yeah. There's. I didn't even see that one. I'm a bit of a genius, if you couldn't tell. With one mech boss left to go, we slept through the day, and I crafted some buffs. When Caleb returned, the fight began. I'm buffed. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he going? <laughs> Where is he going? Oh, you're fine. That top left and top right hand are almost dead. Oh, fuck it. I have to mirror out. Oh my god. Oh my god, he switched aggro so fast, he's coming to you. No! I didn't get the heal. Oof. Bro, you are just... You gotta just bring him down and just run in a line away from him. Boom. Every mech boss is dead. And it's we a have done it. Once again, the Shadow Flame Knife proved to be one of the best early hard mode weapons. We started out today's journey by farming Chlorophyte in the jungle. Junking his bunker potion. We plan to use this Chlorophyte to craft the true Excalibur and a full set of turtle armor. However, this wouldn't be nearly as easy as we thought. The true Excalibur is the second ingredient to the Terrorblade and a fantastic sword with good knockback, range, and DPS, so killing turtles would be a breeze. Nope, no turtle shell. 50th giant tortoise, and I have none turtle shell. No turtle shell. But after an hour of killing turtles, we only had two shells. It took an additional hour and 200 turtle kills to get the four shells that we needed. I helped Caleb farm some extra chlorophyte for his turtle set and we built a simple arena in the jungle. This arena would be crucial for beating Plantera. Oh, we should also have spawn points in the... Actually, so... I placed heart lanterns and campfires and the fight began. Are you ready? Are you trying to torch God without saying anything? No, I just want it to be light. You know, yeah, like, really? You know or not. Caleb decided to summon the torch God. So we did that, buffed up, and the ready? fight began. Yep. Here she comes. Cop. I'm gonna hit her with this as well. I literally like, don't do that. I didn't bring my good potions. Ugh, I'm at three. Two. Whoa. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. They buffed it, but like they nerfed it with that. 
Terra, uh... I died. While Caleb died to the boss for the 15th time in this playthrough, the fight went relatively smooth. I waited for Caleb to return so he could guide me to the temple. Oh my. However, we weren't here to fight Golem. Let's just back out. Let's go home. I returned home and summoned the solar eclipse. The event was good for gold, but not too many Mothrons were spawning. Mm, I want that gold. Finally, a Mothron spawned and I got my broken hero sword. She killed the nurse, she dropped a broken hero sword. I snuck past all of the mobs and crafted the Terra Blade, one of the best pre-Moon Lord swords. We used this Terra Blade to kill more Mothrons, getting another broken hero sword and the Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo. I have Cthulhu. Let's go. Oddly, I crafted more buffs and flasks and we returned to the temple. This time, we were here to kill the boss. Our dungeon was relatively trapless and our boss room was perfect. Are we in the room? Clear these traps. Right there. Alright, that's all of them. Oh. I flattened the bottom of the arena, placed some platforms, and started the fight. What? Alright, let me get the hearts from him whenever he dies. Yep. Because I have to summon him. Alright, grab your bag. Our platform was just high enough that the golem couldn't attack us by jumping. We wasted no time and fought him eight more times. Well, we'll, we'll regenerate. Yeah, I get crits for like 400. Nice. How many summons do we have? He didn't drop any fucking hearts that time. I have five left. Hey, where you can't hit us by jumping. I didn't even realize I had one. I still one haven't gotten hit. Him. I'm a Chad. It, it's, but it's like, Not it's his last, his last name is like. We returned home and I sold the majority of the loot he dropped. Mm -hmm. Then I used the beetle husks to craft our endgame armor. Beetle armor. Outfit. Ninety-one defense. I caught a truffle worm and used my conch shell to travel to the beach on the left side of our world. We weren't ready to kill fish run yet, and I planned to get the influx waiver. I built some rope up and activated a Martian probe. This event is honestly one of my least favorites, so I'm not going to show too much of it. We killed multiple flying saucers and didn't get the car key or the influx waiver a single time. What a drop. Xeno staff. Oh, we can't use that. We decided to swallow our losses and fight Duke Fishron. I traveled to the beach and dug into the sand, making sure not to leave the ocean biome. Uh, are you gonna have something to start spawn over there or no? Are we? I don't have a bed. I built an asphalt bridge and placed heart lanterns. We buffed up, and I fished up the duke. Uh, okay. Always happens because I have to zoom out. In this first fight, I was staying in the air far too long, which allowed Fishron to attack me easily. Smallest? Smallest beach in the world. What size map did we choose? Medium. 
Eventually, we died after making it pretty far. I am absolutely terrible at Fishron, and to no one's surprise, Caleb's DPS was minuscule and he was barely hitting him. This wasn't Caleb's fault, it was just simply that Duke Fishron wanted to follow me around at all times. We died once again, and we were feeling pretty demotivated, but we summoned him one more time. Oh my god, this is a rough start, because my map is on. That's a problem. I'm gonna die because I'm trying to turn it off. Tornadoes in the middle. Bruh, I got trapped between the tornadoes. Fuck, fuck. But I got stuck between him and the world border. This time, we defeated Duke Fishron, and with the Duke dead, we only have two more bosses before the end of this series. Before the end of this series, there are three goals we must complete. Defeat the Lunatic Cultist and the Pillars, defeat the Moon Lord, and craft the best item in all of Terraria, the Zenith. We start today's episode working towards the third goal by obtaining the Influx Waiver. The Influx Waiver has a 16.66% drop chance from Martian Saucers, so we might be here a while. Another Truffle Worm. Get ready, Caleb. Oh no. These are not friends. Oh, wrong button. I got stuck on our rope. We've got to get rid of that. What rope? The rope that goes up to the sky. Still confused somehow, some way, to this day. Oh, I just got lasered. Ouch. What? <sighs> Fucking ground mobs, dude. What? Just hit me. No influx waiver. After the first event ended with no luck, I returned to space on the edge of the map, looking for another Martian probe. Alright, I activated it. Ground mobs, ground mobs, man! The confusion in game confused me in real life. Parky. With no luck on the second event, I returned and spawned another. Oh, well. Come home. This is getting old. I spawned a fourth Martian invasion event and hope for the best. That's not an influx waiver. I spawned our fifth Martian invasion event. At this point, we had gotten the strategy down for fighting them, so it was just a matter of time before we got it. Seconds in the room. Influx waiver. After a tense fight with a Martian saucer, I finally got the influx waiver. Coming down off our fight with Martians, we finally had an easy task. Get Caleb a power glove. Um, I'm trying to make my way to you. Realistically, this is something he should have done a long time ago, but that's besides the point. We searched for about an hour, but didn't end up finding anything but a few life fruits and a magic dagger. Before we left the jungle, we decided to take on Plantera for the Seedler. The Seedler has a low drop chance, but it's necessary to craft the Zenith. Nah, granite biome. We broke a bulb and brought her down to a granite biome where we defeated her with ease. Oh shit. Have that dog in her. Rude! Just give us the Seedler. You know you want to. Seedler, let's fucking go. 
Unbelievably, I got the Seedler first try. I returned home, ready to take Not down our anymore, first of the three uh, goals, defeating the lunatic five, cultist. Five, I grabbed our bass statue and some buffs, and we headed to the dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why'd you summon him? We're not ready. Okay. I'm sitting down at the arena. Well, I'm trying to bring him back down now. Honestly, we can keep oh him in the God. sky if you if we're fine with not having arena buffs. Ow! Forgot that that's the one that hurts. Attack that hurts. I have not been hit by that. Yet. I just kill the things before they hit me. He is one of the coolest bosses, in my opinion. He's one of the more interactive boss fights. Um, lunatic. Cultist. Uh, right side of the world is where we have to go. The cultist is a ridiculously easy boss, and we killed him first try, spawning celestial pillars all across our world. The solar pillar is the most important pillar for a melee playthrough. Its fragments are used to craft new weapons, wings, and armor. Eventually, me and Caleb both took down one pillar each. Killing the last of the enemies, AKI just... I mean, I could come over there. I crafted the daybreak and the solar eruption. These are the weapons that we would use for the Moonlord boss fight. We took down the Stardust Pillar, and I headed to the dungeon to craft a Pumpkin Moon Medallion. We would need this item in order to obtain the Horseman's Blade. But that would have to wait until after Moonlord. It was raining, and we only had one pillar left. We decided to take it down and try our best to kill the Moonlord. We knew that we needed to prepare more, but... We gave it a valiant effort. That's not good, actually. Can I... Do we have... Do you have a mushroom? Um, 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 um no. Fuck. Well, then we can't make any. Oh, uh, yes, I do. I have one. Eyes open. Let's see. I'm oh, going he's down. Centering. Fuck. Oh my god, why did he do it to that side? That's the side I was on. I was getting knocked back. Game. I'm using Terror Blade. Yeah, I'm just. He's eyeballing. Where's try my not, mouse? Try not to damage his other eyes. Okay. They're both low. Bro, fuck me. I'm just getting hit by fucking... I don't know where he is. Thingies. I was on top of her, I'm sorry. Oh, his right eye fell out? Yeah, it's a problem. He's about to beam. Oh my god. You gotta bring Top him down somewhere in water, good. dog. Yeah. I, I'm going. Top eyes out, top eyes out. Hello. My, my game just completed the- okay. Yeah. My game froze. 15 seconds. Dude, I use my rod of Discord, right? Don't worry, don't and worry. Just don't talk. Okay, Just don't, don't even talk. I'll tell you what If we just keep him going in a straight line and terror blade him, that's honestly, that's the strat. Here. Fucking god, dude, that was close. That was close, like, at way too many points oh in the fight. Oh my god. Ugh. To our surprise, we defeated the Moon Lord. 
effectively beating Terraria. However, we still had one goal left. Two Moonlord drops are needed for the Zenith, the Meowmere and the Star Wrath. I was lucky enough to get the Star Wrath first try, but the Meowmere would be a different story. Oh, oh my god! god. So look at that DPS. You wish oh you my had that god. We still don't have DPS meters. I got 32 gold if you want it. Oh no. He got me. After killing the cultist and the pillars, we were able to craft summons for the Moon Lord. We had to kill the Moon Lord an additional eight times to get the Terrarian and the Meowmere, but we eventually got both. It hurts so bad. Wow, I was at five HP. We summoned the Pumpkin Moon and ended up making it to the final wave. We ended up with multiple horseman's blades, and I gathered the rest of the components needed for the zenith. Well, I do not. Why are you doing this, bro? I need to fight the queen bee. I need to fight it. I traveled to the jungle to collect the last ingredient. What? Did we not just kill her? We did, but, uh... I guess I summoned the one inside of this bee. Then, I returned home to craft the zenith. I have a star fury, horseman's blade, seedler, meow mirror, influx waver, terra blade, enchanted sword, beekeeper, star wrath, and a copper short sword. Not in any specific order, obviously. <laughs> Wowzers. We had completed our final three goals. We decided to celebrate by killing the Moon Lord once again. It could be way cooler. All right, uh, do we have any bosses? Do we have like a Moon Lord, maybe? This is gonna be a hard boss fight, so be ready. While I let this fight play out, I wanna thank you all for watching and thanks to all of you who subscribed. Since we started this series, there have been many firsts for us. We had our first returning subscribers, our first real video to hit a thousand views, and we hit a thousand subscribers. We're already well on our way to 2,000, and I can't wait to bring you guys more content. I love you all, and- Hold on. Is the fight already over? Damn. Okay. No meow meow. Again. After this long journey, let's end it where we first began. Let's fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. No, we will not fight the Empress of Light, don't ask.